What's going on, doll fans? It is your boy Dylan, and I am here to do my preview video for the Buffalo Bills game that is coming up this Sunday on Halloween. Um, yeah, so about that, um, I gotta say, I'm not feeling too good about it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm obviously, I'm going to get to my score prediction at the end. But man, I just like, just real quick off the bat, I just want to say that, um, you know, I guess be, just because it's Halloween, I'll, I'll use the, you know, whatever the uh, appropriate, um, I don't know whatever you want to call it, the words, the phrasing, the appropriate phrasing, there we go, uh, the appropriate phrasing for it and call it, you know, call it what it is, bro, it's scary. I mean, look, at the end of the day, if the Dolphins were to have any chance of winning this game, they would literally have to play a perfect game on their side of the ball and simultaneously hope for a shitty day at the office with the Bills. Like we could, it's it won't be enough to just play a perfect game on our side of the ball, and them also play really well on their side of the ball, right? Because even if even it which I mean it's impossible, but even if the Dolphins you know were to do everything right, like they don't shoot themselves in the foot with any uh, penalties or turnovers, and um, you know they're relatively efficient. Right, because there's no such thing as perfect or whatever. But like, you know, if they're able to do those things on their side of the ball, if the Bills also play well on their side of the ball, I'm pretty sure they're still going to end up beating us. So because they're just they're that much better of a team. Um, anyway, so let's go ahead and get into this, though. Let's start off by taking a look at the injury report. Because unfortunately, um, you know, I, and I told you guys, this was one of the things that I was worried about going into the season. Again, not just because we, you know, started to rack up injuries in preseason, but also because I was, you know, last year, again, I've said this a bunch of times, that's one of the things that we were lucky with last year as we remained one of the healthier teams in the, the, the league. And just like a lot of those defensive statistics that we were top of the league in or top five or whatever, those things are super hard to carry over year in and year out. So luck is not really on our side going into the season. And then we started piling up injuries at the beginning of the year, um, etc. And it was a concern, right? And so, um, you know, here we are. We've got a long, long list, and our, our, you know, our injured reserve is starting to pile up bodies too. Obviously, we just put McCordy on injured reserve and Malcolm Brown on injured reserve. But look at these guys, man! Look at all of these injuries, okay? And so we have what four, four guys that are questionable now. Uh, you know, Devonte Parker. The word is is he probably won't play, but these other guys. Uh, Jerome Baker. I mean, if I'm being honest, there is Noah's pretty much inactive anyway, so he's probably going to be inactive. Parker's probably going to be inactive. Mance was inactive this previous week, and uh, Ritter did a, a pretty good, you know, uh, or I don't know that you could say it was good, but because none of this offensive line is good, but I mean, it hasn't been worse than either Mance or Dieter, so. Um, you know, whatever. Uh, so Greg Mance probably, and Baker, he might too. Um, you know, obviously he's supposed to be a bigger part of, you know, this defense and he's a starter and whatever. Um, you know, but he does have the, the knee injury. Are they going to test that? And either way, it doesn't matter who you talk about on this list. I mean, all of these guys um, are dealing with stuff right and have lingering things and unfortunately the problem is is that you know we're just getting to about the midway point in the season but the problem is is that 
um, you know, we're actually still a couple weeks off because there's it's uh, 18 weeks now. And so that means, uh, you know, we're in week seven, uh, actually going into week eight. So one more week after this, we're almost there. But um, anyway, I'm sorry. I just got so many things in my head about this. But like we have all these guys on on injury or on the injury report. And unfortunately, the problem is, is they don't think injuries don't get better over the course of a season. Right. Um, generally speaking, because you wear out more and more and more over the course of a season, you don't get adequate rest over the course of the season that is necessary to, you know, fully heal injuries. So all of these guys are not going to be playing at 100 percent, even if they do play. So let's just run through this. So obviously Baker is questionable with the knee. Noah's questionable with a knee slash ankle. Mance is questionable with a groin. Parker with a shoulder and a hamstring. But then you also, of course, have Xavier Howard, who's been nursing a shoulder and a groin injury all year. And yes, he hasn't, he hasn't because of that, and because how much the defense has had to play, you know, over the course of the season on a per game basis. Yeah, he uh, and also because they're using uh they're using him in ridiculous ways. Um look, especially considering he had the groin injury. Like is uh, cuz I I was getting ready to say he's not having the best year for a Xavier Howard, right? For for his caliber of a player. But it doesn't help when uh, who was I can't remember exactly who the the receiver was off the top of my head in the Tampa Bay game that was eating him up on the crossers. The dude's got a groin injury and that's a it's a soft tissue injury and that's a really tough injury for a cornerback who who has a reputation as you know a pretty lockdown guy. It's hard for him to be that. So, I mean, look to be fair, same thing goes for Byron Jones, even though and he's got what does he have? He's got. Uh, Achilles and a groin injury. Those are two terrible injuries for a cornerback to have for a guy who's supposed to be locked down because it, it makes it difficult to get in and out of breaks, to mirror guys, to have that catch-up speed. Those are really tough injuries to have to deal with. So being fair to them, right? And and when you then have the dude fucking... And, and that... W who is it? Uh, Antonio Brown? I think it was Antonio Brown. Um... When you have him basically mirroring that dude who's a slot receiver too, by the way. Howard is a boundary corner. He's not a slot receiver. I mean, you're kind of asking for trouble. Like, if you're just keeping it real, you're asking for trouble in that situation. And he's bound, especially with the type of talent that, that, that he's going up against, you're bound to get beat, bro. Because it's not really his play style to begin with. But then secondly, and especially as a slot corner, you really rely on short area quickness, catch up speed, and being able to get in and out of breaks fast. So it's not a good situation to be in. But even still, he has remained one of the better defensive players on your team. Um, and he does lead the team in takeaways, I'm pretty sure. So certainly in interceptions. But anyway, I digress. After all of that, he's battling the shoulder groin. Brandon Jones with an ankle. Byron Jones, as I mentioned, Achilles in a groin. Then you have Jalen Phillips with his ankle. Elandon Roberts with a shoulder. Jacoby with a hamstring. Zach Sealer and Tua with ribs. Right? So, you know, they're banged up and it doesn't get much better as the season goes on. And I, I gotta, again, I, and knock on wood, you know, whatever kind of mystical juju shit you want to do or if you want to pray to god or allah or whatever it is that you do do what you do i'm knocking on some wood here but i am worried about tua in this game like i gotta keep it real i mean obviously it was the bills who knocked him out the first time when we played them in week two right it didn't take very long even and Jesse Davis is still going to be a right tackle on this offensive line. And they have, look, yes, I agree with people. They played better against the Jacksonville and um, Atlanta defenses. But they have, uh, their defensive line, they still gave, first of all, they still gave up a ton of pressures. 
and Tua was under pressure basically all day and masked a lot of that because of his quick release and his ability to manipulate the pocket. But bro, this defensive line is way different. And look, I mean, yes, okay, they do have a couple guys. Uh, doubtful, real quick, Spencer Brown, offensive tackle. That's actually pretty, you know, big. Dawson Knox has now been ruled out. So, there, you know, some injury things. I mean, obviously you don't ever wish guys to be injured. But, you know, stuff that does help lean, in, you know, towards the Dolphins a little bit more. I don't think it's ultimately going to matter if I'm keeping it real. And then you have defensive tackle Justin Zimmer as questionable. Other than that, uh, Boogie Basham, he'll be there with illness, Emmanuel Sanders, vet rest day, and Cole Beasley, vet rest day. So no big deal. Those three guys are going to be available. Uh, so they're not really, and of course, they're also coming off their bye week. So they're rested. They're ready. They just had a tough loss to the Tennessee Titans in their previous game. And they're going to be ready to come out because look, and at the end of the day too, it's a division rival. It's obviously the fucking the Dolphins that they have to play against. But they're looking to, um, you know, get that first seed because they're going to want to play off by, right? So they're not just expected to make it to the playoffs. They're going to win the division, okay? And they're probably, I think they have a high, personally, I think that it's going to be, my prediction for the Super Bowl has been Bills Cardinals. That's my prediction. But the Bills have a, a, as good a chance of anybody of making it to the Super Bowl. They want to increase that probability by making sure they go out and stomp the Dolphins into the ground and get the win so they can try and get that first uh, seed. Because they're going to want it, especially up against a team that they absolutely should beat. I, I don't, you know, people are going to be like, oh, it's a trap game and the Dolphins could win because it's a trap game and they're going to be looking down on us. Bro. I don't think that's going to be the case. And sure, again, you know, just like any given Sunday, whatever. I mean, people have talked about the fact that, you know, we're 6-0 and on Halloween. And that's cool. That's cool. Like, it's fun, but it doesn't fucking mean anything. Okay? And so I don't believe the Bills are just going to look down on us and overlook us. Uh, no, I think what's going to happen is is they're going to be ready to go. They're going to be ready to get their fifth month. They've had two weeks to prepare for us. They're gonna they're rested. They're ready to go. They are going to want to come out and get their fifth win so they can stay pace with these other teams in the AFC in the conference, right? Uh, you know, help to secure their division title, etc., 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 and work for that that first round bye. So anyway, getting back to something I cut myself off on to get to the the injury report, and I'll go ahead and swap over to my preview template. Uh, and so their defensive line is significantly better than the past two teams, unquestionably. We've got guys like Greg Rousseau and Boogie Basham, who, yes, are um, rookies, but they're performing. Um, you've got, you know, guys like Jerry Jones and Star Latulale, and then you got, you know, Uche and Milano and Edmonds at linebacker, right? And you got all of these guys, man, and they are fierce. And you'll see when we get to these league standings, man, that defense is nasty. But let's go ahead and get into this preview overall because we will go through the league standings, and they're obviously good on the offensive side of the ball as well but one thing we have to also keep in mind especially with these league standings is that the bills they're just coming off of their bye week and they've only played six games to this point most of the rest and now obviously there are a few other teams that have only played six games to this point right because we're going through the bye week cycle um Right, we've started. We've entered the the area of bye weeks, and now so each team is starting to take them. The Bills just took theirs, which now puts them behind the rest of the team, uh, the rest of the league. Most of the rest of the league has played seven games, including us. But then there's also uh, the two teams that have just played eight: the Cardinals um, and um, who was it? The Packers, the Cardinals and the Packers, who now have played eight games. So when we look at, and especially when you look at some of these statistics where they're in like the middle of the pack, 
it's in part because of that, right? Because they've only played six games. So that is important to keep in mind when we go through these statistics because, you know, if it was if it was all said and done and it was even, if it was all even, right, all teams played the same amount of games, the Bills would likely be higher in a lot of these categories than what they are, right? So, uh, but anyway, let's get again. Let's get into this. So the Dolphins now, unfortunately, are one and six on the season. The Bills are four and two. Like I said, they're going to want to come out. They're going to want to stomp the Dolphins and get themselves to five and two and keep pace. Um, but let's look at these league standings because across the board, it doesn't matter what category they beat us clear and away. But let's take a look at this. So in total yards, the Dolphins have two thousand one hundred and fifty-three, which is twenty-fourth in the league. They have 2,469, which is 15th, and they've played one less game than us, right? Um, two less games than the Packers and the Cardinals, who are ahead of them in the standings because of that, right? Now, this is obviously overall for the year, and that's why the, the averages are a little bit more important, but it is fun to have this in there and, and to talk about it because... You know, even though we've played one less game, they still beat us on the season for total yards. Anyway, yards per game, the Dolphins have 307.6, which is currently ranked 28th in the league. The Bills have 411.5 yards per game, which ranks 6th in the league. The Dolphins in total passing have 1,718, which is currently 20th. The Bills are 1,732. Still, it's obviously marginal, just barely ahead of us um, by, what, 14 yards. But that's good enough for 17th in the league. But when then you look at their passing yards per game, they have 288.7, which is 8th in the league. Right, whereas the Dolphins are 245.4, which is currently good for 21st. And rushing, the Dolphins have 561 on the season, which is 29th. They have 784 in one less game at 12th in the league. Per game average, the Dolphins have 80.1. Um, have 80.1 which is good for 31st in the league, and the Bills have 130.7, which is 6th in the league. So they're rushing for 130 yards per game, which is not, you know, particularly... Obviously, Josh Allen is a good part of that, right? Um, and look, we can't stop mobile quarterbacks usually, and... Um, it's yeah i we'll just see we'll see how it plays out man i i think this game has a potential to be a, a another shellacking but anyway let's get through the rest of these statistics so total points the dolphins have 127 on the and this one this one is really like and it shows the 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 far cry of a difference in caliber of team we've played six games and we only have 127 points on the season which is currently 27th or 24th with ties the bills there are no ties within the top five they're just fifth clearing away by themselves no ties ahead of them but only having played six games they're at 203 points which is good for fifth fifth in the league and they're one of the handful of teams with the least amount of games played. It's outrageous. Points per game, we're at 18.1, which is 29th or 26th with ties. They have 33.8 per game, which is second. Okay? Now, defensively, and this is where it gets really scary for the Dolphins, we're giving up. 414.9 yards per game, which is good for 32nd in the league. They're giving up 270.2, which is first in the league. Rushing yards, we're giving up 300, or excuse me, passing yards, we're giving up 311.6, which is 31st. They're giving up 192.8, which is first. Rushing, we're giving up 117.7 per game, which is 19th. They're giving up 89.7, which is 6th points per game. We're giving up 29.6, 31st, 25th after ties. They're giving up 16.3. They're all alone with number one in the, at first in the league with 16.3 points per game. This defense is nasty. Takeaways. 
We have nine total, which puts us at 11th or sixth after ties. Bro, they, again, are one of the teams that has played the least amount of games. Only six. But they still have 16 total takeaways on the season, and it's first in the league. Now, they're, all, they're technically tied for first because I think it's the Colts, if I'm not mistaken, who are tied with them. But Jesus Christ, man. They played the least amount of games out of all the teams. Well, minus a couple others because there are a couple teams that... Four teams, I think, that were on by this week. But they're still first in the league. Interceptions. We have three on the season, two of which are, are Howard's, right? That has this 27th or 9th after ties. They're 10th. 10th. I mean, second with 10. Sorry. It's so flabbergasting that I, I'm I'm speaking wrong. They have 10. They're second in the league. Technically tied for second because uh, I don't even remember who they're tied with for this one. But they're tied with one other team. They have 10 interceptions. It's outrageous. Fumbles. We have six. That has us fourth or tied for third. They also have six, which they're third on the list, but technically tied for third. We're tied for third with them at six. I mean, sacks though. Look, we have 12. That has us 26th, 10th with ties. They have 14 in one less game, which is 18th and tied for eighth. Passes defensed. And this is one of our best categories. We have 35 passes defensed. Howard had three of those alone in the last game, right? That has us third in the league. Technically, with ties, we're, we're tied for third. But look, bro, they have 33. They're right behind us. And they played one less game than us. That's fifth or fourth with ties. But then here we go. The motherfucking, the motherfucking... Uh, third down percentage. We're giving up 51.6%, which is 31st. They're giving up 33.3, which is fifth in the league. I mean, clear in a way, they are in an entire, an entirely different galaxy than the Miami Dolphins. It's unfortunate. It really is. But it, but it's the reality. It is. It, it's unfortunately the reality. So anyway. I'll comment a little bit more at the very end. Let me just get through the rest of this because this has gone on for a bit longer than I would have liked it to, but it is what it is, man. There were a few things that I wanted to say in this video and, you know, um, and, and some things to really, it just, it's going to be a rough Sunday, folks. Anyway, so this is a take, a, this is a look at our previous game. Obviously, the Bills didn't play this past week in week seven so this is their week six matchup against the tennessee titans and this is our week seven matchup um against the atlanta falcons and how we did against the falcons how they did against the titans so let's take a look at it we scored 28 points they scored 31 so they still beat us in the head-to-head -head. we did have 413 total yards and that's good and you love to see it they still managed to squeak out a win there in that category with 417. We had 281 passing yards. They had 335. We did manage to beat them in rushing, though, with 132 to their 82. And a slight edge in yards per play at 5.9 to their 5.7. No, neither team lost a fumble. They did throw an interception, but we threw two, so we lose that battle. We did win third down conversion rate, though, by 10%. They're still good at 53, but 63%, we were damn good there. I'm not quite so sure that that's going to be the case against this Buffalo Bills team who's con allowing conversion rates at 33.3% and who's, you know, like number one in damn near every statistical category, right? But we'll see. We did beat them also in time of possession with 34-38 to their 32-50 and in penalties 6 to their 8. Now, obviously, we're one of the highest penalized teams in the league, so obviously that discipline that was supposedly a hallmark, and, if, you know, if we're keeping it real, I, I mean, I gotta be honest, it was. They were actually one of the least penalized teams in 2019 and 2020, surprisingly enough, even though they were super young teams and so on and so forth. Uh, but, you know, 
that's not been the case this year and they've been very undisciplined. All right, now let's just take a quick look at the quarterbacks. Obviously, Tua has played a few less games than what Josh Allen has, so that is important context to keep in mind. But he does have a slight edge in completion percentage with his 69.5 to Josh Allen's 64.8, both of which are still, you know, good marks. But two is damn near 70%. If you round that, you're going to round it up to 70, right? Uh, and But obviously, Josh Allen wins the rest of the categories. Um, because as of right now, he definitely is the better player, but he's also on the far better team with far better coaching, etc. And so he has 1,723 yards to two is 835. He's got 15 touchdowns, more than twice the amount of touchdowns that two has. Obviously, again, two has played a few less games, about half the games that Allen has played to this point, 15 to seven. And he does have one less interception, three to two is four, and has, of course, a higher passer rating. Although two is passer rating is good. Allen's is 103.6 to two is 95.1. All right, so keys to the victory. Keys to victory. If the Dolphins want to have any chance of securing this win on offense, so first and foremost, look, they have to, they have to play... Um, I'm going to start with my number three here, actually. And I, again, this one is on the list every week until they fix it, and they have not yet. No costly mistakes, penalties, or turnovers. In every single game, they have all of those. Okay? Whether it be that we've, we see, we've seen turnovers, penalties, and other mistakes, including mental errors, dropped balls, missed assignments, right? Things like that. Poor tackling, right? So... Um, um, well, I guess the poor tackling goes to the defensive side of the ball, but we see that shit, you know, all the time dropped passes, right? If you want to be specific with the offense. So we can't have that. They have to play a clean game of fucking football. They have to, you know, be efficient. And so that now it goes to the first thing that I put on the list, run, run, run the ball. You actually started to stick with it last week and it produced for you. Now, again, this defense is way more difficult than the past two defenses. It's literally the number one defense in the league. It is the top defense in the league. Okay? So, ah, it's a bit scary. But run, run, run the ball. Right? And then it plays into number two, protect Tua at all costs. That will help to protect Tua, but running the ball actually has been one of your offensive strengths now, Malcolm Brown is on IR, so he's going to be a loss in pass protection. You know, he's not, and maybe, I guess, short yardage situations, although he's not very good in that, or really much of anything. So, you know, you would think that by default, Miles Gaskin's probably going to get a bit more attention, which is good for the offense, hopefully. Um, although this defense, again, is the top defense in the league. So, look, bro. A clean game of football, start by running the ball, commit to it, and then when you do um, drop back to pass, listen, and frankly, okay, so I, I'm not going to say that I don't want them to take any shots. They absolutely need to, although Devontae Parker might not be in this game. Will Fuller is still not going to be back. So it's still the fucking, you know, the backups of the backups at wide receiver, but... Um, Look, man, especially with Gesicki, you probably should. And, and look, even Matt Collins or Waddle, if you want to take some shots, they need to take some shots down the field for sure. But if this happens to be a little bit more of an efficient type game where, you know, you do take what the defense gives you, because look, you got to you got to just have forward progress and then put up points when you have the ability to put up points. OK, against this team. So to I, I, I don't, you know, I don't like that they've said, oh, we're just going to give what the defense gives us. I think that's been a little bit of an excuse. But in this particular context, you're kind of half to going to have to do that. Because it's the fucking best defense in the league. So anyway, play a clean game. You get the point. Defensively, it starts by containing Josh Allen into the pocket 
and then getting pressure on him, which we're not very good at doing, but you got to find a way. Maybe, I mean, and he's pretty damn good against the Blitz, too, so is that even going to work? But they got to figure it out, man. They got to fucking figure it out because that's, if they're going to have any chance at stopping this potent Bills offense, especially with this banged up as we're starting to get on the defensive side of the ball, etc., bro, I mean, Jason McCourty got put on IR. It's they they have to contain Allen into the pocket, set the edge, put get some push up the middle, and then get pressure. Then they have to play lockdown coverage. They've been playing a ton of zone, and you know, I mean Allen can fucking win against zone, he can win against man, but they gotta play tight coverage. They gotta challenge these receivers at the line of scrimmage, bro. And then uh, you know, once the ball does get out to the to the playmakers, they got to fucking... Or hold on. I'm sorry. Play lockdown and challengers. And then they got to make their goddamn tackles, bro. Make their fucking tackles. And prioritize that, as much as I hate to say this, over getting the turnover. Get your tackle first and then try and punch the ball out. Right? Don't, you know, be overly aggressive in trying to jump routes. If you can, you know, if, if you if you read it and you read it right and you can do it, first of all, there's only like a couple people that I would trust with that to begin with. And that's going to be Howard and probably Holland, Javon Holland. If I'm going to trust any, because those are the only two guys that I know actually have legit ball skills. So everybody outside of Howard and Holland don't even attempt to jump routes if it happens to float right into your fucking hands catch the ball but just stick to your fucking receiver or whoever you have to cover make sure you challenge them off the line of scrimmage but then tackle the motherfucker when they get the ball stop with these whiffed ass fucking tackles anyway all right this video went super long so it is what it is I am going to get out of here though after all of that I think you guys get the picture um, whew, there was a lot to say though. I mean, this is a tough game. I want them to win, dude. And oh, and real quick though, my uh, my prediction. Unfortunately, I I see this game as a potential blowout again, and my score prediction is going to reflect that to some degree. Although there is a possibility the Dolphins don't even score as much as I'm going to predict, but I'm going with a 42-21 Bills victory. Um, and But I think one of those, at least one of those touchdowns probably will come in garbage time uh, when they're playing from behind. But I think as long as Tua doesn't, you know, get fucking beat up in this game and potentially injured again and plays a full game, I think he's going to have a decent performance, although it is the best defense in the league. So, I mean, he's kind of at a massive disadvantage no matter what, especially having to go up and play in their stadium. So it's going to be a rough one, but, you know, I think that I think that he could probably manage 21 points if, you know, he doesn't get knocked out for some reason. So knock on wood, whatever you do, hopefully he can stay healthy and they can protect him. But either way, I think it's going to be a pretty big decisive win for the Bills, 42-21. And with that, I'm going to get out of here. Make sure you check out Rave on Sports, though. Before I do... The new fan-driven sports app that is aiming to enhance your game day experience with uh, live play-by-play -play coverage as well as live chats with other fans and content creators like myself. And with that, I'm going to get out of here. I hope you guys appreciate my perspective. If you do, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the bell if you want to get the alerts. Share my channel and videos with your friends and family. Leave your questions and comments. Electric car travels the from... Section. And of course, as always... Follow me on Twitter at Dylan Tartaro. And with that, I'm out. I'll see y'all soon. Fins up.